Hello everybody. Welcome to this session which in which we will discuss uh, one of the very important question types that is always asked in all bank exams a closed test. Now in this session I will discuss the closed test type that was presented in uh, the 2018 IVPSPO main exam. Please pay attention. Uh, before I start, let me tell you that uh, closed test tests us on many parameters. The first one or the most visible one or the most apparent one is vocabulary. So, we all take closed test to be a passage where blanks are given and words have to be filled in to uh, complete the idea that has been uh, punctuated by those blanks. Well, this is just something which is very, very outwardly or directly visible. We also should understand that in addition to being these tests, being these passages testing us for our knowledge of vocabulary, they also uh, test us on our knowledge of grammar and of course, idea flow. So, a closed test is a very, very comprehensive test and a comprehensive question type and so it needs to be dealt with very carefully. In order to do so, in order to succeed in answering uh, closed test blanks properly or filling them up properly, we need to first read the entire paragraph as it is given to us. So, I will start with doing the same for you. There is a closed test passage I have for you here and I will begin with reading out uh, whatever it is it entails. Parallelly, you will be able to view it on the screen. Please pay attention as I read it out for you. Uh, the directions first. In the following passage, there are blanks and words printed in bold, each of which has been numbered. Each question has to be answered in a particular way as indicated above the question. Read the directions given above each question and answer the questions. Okay, so the directions are out here for you to read again and understand. Uh, before you do that, let me also tell you how this particular question type works. Now, instead of a passage which is dotted with blanks, there are certain other instructions where which are present next to the blanks. So, it is not just about reading the passage or the paragraph and, and uh, filling them up with words alone. There are various kinds of questions that this uh, closed test presented and you have to keep these directions in mind, the sub directions that are there in the passages and then proceed. Okay, so let me read out the passage for you. I have always been one, I have always been dash about reading and I spent most of my life in a library and I do not know what life would be like if I did not have that, uh, the second blank here has a word a diversion given next to it. She says, I see dash that come from learning how to read. Adults might dash the non-profit organizations for a variety of reasons. Dash, I mean there is a blank here. They help people learn to read or speak English as a way for them to get family supporting jobs. Uh, teach children the value of literacy and had better access to information. This is uh, blank six in their daily life. The client base of the organization has expanded in recent years in part because of the growth in demand of English as a second language course. And next to the sentence, we have the, the number seven given to us. Now, you must have seen uh, as I have been reading along uh, the same passage as it appeared on the screen for you that there are various parts that are in bold. Now, there of course, definitely uh, maybe some questions are asked from here and therefore, we have to keep track of those. People from all over the world who are immigrants in Arkansas take our program. Miss Dew says dash to illustrate her point, she referred to a case of an immigrant uh, who isn't even literate in her own language. Then there's a newcomer who had a dash job he wishes to continue in the United States. Some other immigrants feel lost in the culture shock and are content to plow a lonely furrow. And here next to this idiom which is in bold, there is a number 10. So, in total we have 10 uh, numbers marked throughout the pa passage and now we need to look at uh, questions and understand what they ask of us or what they demand for us. Now, instructions for each of the questions have been given separately. Directions for question 1. Uh, 
From the words listed below, choose the most appropriate word to fill in the blank in the passage given above. So, uh, you can go back to the passage and check. I've always been dash and this dash has been marked as one about reading. So, you have to choose a word which fills in and completes this idea about reading. Uh, can it be emotional, interested, persistent, concerned or passionate? I have always been emotional about reading is not correct because emotional is somebody who is easily moved or affected by feelings and emotions and here the idea is about reading. So, you cannot be emotional about reading therefore, it is an illogical uh, filler. Can you say I have always been interested about reading? Well, the word interested per se may relate with reading but you have to also keep in mind as I told you earlier the grammatical correctness of the sentence. Now, it is incorrect to say interested about reading. You are interested in a subject or in an activity and not about an activity. So, this particular uh, element of grammar helps you move on to the third choice and uh, eliminate two. Uh, the third one says persistent. Now, persistent means somebody or some somebody uh, who puts in untiring effort and is continuous in an activity. Well, I've always been persistent about reading doesn't make sense. It is illogical and therefore, we cannot go ahead with three either. Uh, the fourth one has the word concern. Now, concerned, what does it mean? Concern mean means affected or troubled or even anxious about something. So, is it correct to say I have always been concerned about reading? Now, which aspect of reading or what? Now, it does not have any logical clarity to this. We are concerned about what will happen to you. We are concerned about somebody but being concerned about reading has no um, no meaning to it. So, it, there is no coherent idea being created by filling the word the blank with concern. So, uh, we cannot go with any of these. We cannot work with emotional, interested, persistent or concerned. Now, the only word left is passionate. Okay. So, let me read it out to you and let us see if it completes the idea. I have always been passionate about reading. Now, what is passionate? What does passionate mean? Ca passionate means to be compelled by strong feelings. So, the idea conveyed over here is that the person finds reading to be something that drives him or her and it uh, attracts that person to itself. And so, we can mark the answer as 5 because it says passionate and it is a correct answer. Okay. Look at the directions for the second question which say fill in the most appropriate word in the blank from the words given below. If the word written alongside the blank fits the passage, select 5 as the correct choice. So, what is the word that is given next to the blank? It says diversion. Well, so, let us see if diversion is correct per se or uh, it needs to be replaced by any of the words in options 1, 2, 3 and 4. For this again, we will need to read the sentence and I spent most of my time, my life in a library and I don't know what life would be like if I didn't have that dash diversion. So, is it right to say diversion? Well, diversion means... Uh, Diversion means distraction, diversion means uh, changing the course or diversion means turning aside from a purpose or a track. Uh, I do not think it is a logical choice and so we need to consider the other words. Can you say promotion? Promotion means some, it has two meanings. It could mean advancement in rank or it could also mean a an encouragement given to somebody. Now, none of these makes sense because it is not right to say, I do not know what life would be like if I did not have that promotion. We are not talking about any kind of advancement in rank or any kind of encouragement here. Here, the author is talking about what, uh, you know, what drives her or made her get attracted to reading. Can we say adventure? Adventure is an unusual experience and this also has no relevance in the in the idea that has been presented. 
can we go with escape i don't know what life would be like if i didn't have that escape now here escape makes sense because it is a means of providing relief to somebody and therefore it is logical to say that this particular activity provides me an escape from everything else okay now let us also look at four before we mark on three as the answer the fourth word is uh, escapade now what's an escapade a escapade is a negative word it means a reckless adventure and the author is so passionate about reading it's not a reckless adventure for her also otherwise also it does not grammatically fit the context so we can mark on 3 as the answer and the blank can be suitably filled by the word escape to complete the idea okay now let us look at the third question the third question says choose the most meaningful option and fill it in the blank okay uh, the third blank has i see dash that come from learning how to read i i see dash that come from learning how to read fine so what do we have to do here okay the fillers are not one word the fillers are have a phrase given in each option so i see dash that come from learning how to read now it is talking about something that the author derives from reading uh it is something that the author derived from reading and it is not just something which she derived but it is something that is uh, anybody can derive from reading because uh, now you have to consider the word the present tense used here i can see i see dash that come from learning how to read so we need to look at that option where uh, one of the words the subject one of the nouns is in plural to match the plural word come over here okay now keeping this in mind can we go ahead with one well if you look at just the noun we find that all the nouns have been given in plural results events actions surgeries and intervention so probably that does not work as a clue well regardless of this this is one uh, aspect or one clue that we do need to keep in mind it may not have come in handy over here but it is a very very useful tool so uh, let us look at the other choices the the coherence of the choice now life changing results it means that the results of reading were substantial can can it be used to fill the blank i see life changing results that come from learning how to read well it is a very meaningful idea and so one seems to be the uh, relevant choice here nevertheless let us look at the rest of them the second one says life shattering events now the idea presented by the author is very very positive it talks about the positive outcomes of reading and we cannot have anything that has any connotation of negativity so both 2 and 3 can be ruled out for the same reason because they have negative words used their life shattering events uh, which is which means that life was destroyed or life threatening actions none of these works fine the fourth one says life saving surgeries now life saving surgeries is irrelevant as a choice because it doesn't relate with reading the activity of reading and the fifth one says life sustaining interventions again this is not contextual and so even 5 is inappropriate here we mark on a one as the answer and then move on to the next question uh the directions for question 4 state from the pairs of phrasal verbs listed below choose the most appropriate one to fill in the blank so there are as you can see on the screen uh each option has a pair of phrasal verbs and you need to choose we need to choose the one pair that fits the blank unequivocally that means both of them work in the same blank at the same time again in order to understand or comprehend we have to read the sentence which has this blank adults might dash the non profit organizations for a variety of reasons adults might well can we say look out or ferret out look out uh 
adults might look out the non profit organizations now there is something missing after the blank which helps us understand look out is not a correct option we look out for something and not, we don't look out something in addition to this even ferret out needs to be followed by the preposition for which is missing here so one is unworthy second one says iron out or smooth out now uh, adults might iron out the non profit organizations for a variety of reasons is absolutely illogical because smooth out or iron out are phrases which are used to in situations where there is a problem and there is some uh, some something being done to remove those problems or uh, find a solution is being worked out now this is not correct because it is contextually a misfit the third one says seek out or find out here the idea is that people go to non profit organizations for a variety of reasons so seek out means to find and find out also means the same and we understand three is a meaningful pair of words okay we cannot go with lash out or splash out because they are irrelevant and we cannot work out work with weed out or get rid of either because the author does not want to get rid of something so this is also incorrect okay we understand for this question 3 is the correct choice okay so for question number 4 we have the option as number 3 now let's move on to the fifth question fill in uh, the blank with the most meaningful clause or sentence from the choices given below so instead of a word which needs to fill the blank there is a complete sentence or a clause given and 5 uh, is the number here okay so we need to look at the sentence before and after uh, the blank 5 which says adults may a uh, seek out or find out the non profit organizations for a variety of reasons and the sentence after 5 says they help people learn to read or speak english as a way for them to get family supporting jobs teach children the value of uh, literacy and whatever so we need to go for that choice which acts as a bridge to the ideas which precede and follow this blank now what is it if we go with the one it says but their game is the same okay the first one says but their game is the same now the first the previous sentence the preceding sentence has spoken about people uh, searching for non profit organizations for a variety of reasons and if we say but their game is the same uh, it actually contradicts because the words variety of reasons is not then justified so we cannot go with one two says but their price is, is the same now are we talking about price alone the sentence says they look for non profit organizations for a variety of reasons and one of those reasons could be price but not uh all may have the same price so here again there is some ambiguity there is some lack of clarity that uh, this option presents and so we cannot go with this either we have to move on to the third one now but their consequence is the same now again we there is no uh, coherence with this option uh and there is no it does not link this with the previous and the following idea so we cannot uh consider 3 as an appropriate choice the fourth one says but their goal is the same so while people approach or look for or search for uh, non profit organizations and their reasons for doing so may be different the goal finally is the same so doesn't it make sense well it does uh, but their failure rate is the same now we are talking about going ahead with trying to do something to achieve something for a cause for a reason and if failure is brought in then it actually again uh, distorts the idea and so we cannot work with 5 so the answer over here is option 4 which very very suitably and grammatically and logically correctly gels both of these sentences with it okay
Let's move on to the next question now, which is question number 6. The directions go as, from the options listed below, identify the grammatically appropriate replacement for the highlighted phrase. So, uh, now take a look at the, the part of the paragraph or the passage where uh, these particular words are in bold. Had better access to information and after that we have number 6 in brackets. So, what do we need to... Um, consider we need to consider these words had better access to information and we need to consider them in the light of the entire sentence and then check for its grammatical appropriateness. So, let me read out the sentence. They help people learn to read or speak English as a way for them to get family supporting jobs, teach children the value of literacy and had better access to information. So, uh, when you listen to this, you understand there is some grammatical or tense inconsistency that prevails in this sentence because while the rest of the clauses are in present tense, this particular uh, clause is in past tense. Had is a past tense verb. So, we need to look for that option where the verb has been uh, presented in the correct uh, tense or the present tense form, which is that if we go with one, it says had a better access to information. Again, this is not right because it is incorrect to say had a better access. The, the noun access is uncountable and therefore we cannot use uh, the indefinite article A for it. So, it is not a correct choice. Have had better access to information distorts it even further because it takes us to that past where things had been there, had have had better access. So, it is in the present perfect tense and we cannot go with any other tense except the present tense. Fine. So, 2 is also ruled out. The third one says have better accesses to information. Uh, the word access is uncountable and most of the times uh, uncountable nouns are in the singular form. So, it is not correct to say accesses to information. Because of this, there is grammatical inconsistency or grammatical incorrectness in this option. F the fourth one says have better access to information. This is correct because the tense has been, in, uh, the tense used here is present tense and therefore, this completes the idea and the grammatical consistency of the verbs used is maintained. Okay, so we mark on option 4 as the correct answer for question number 6. We cannot work with 5 because it says no change and we have already discussed that there is a change needed because the tense uh, gets disturbed over here. Fine. So, let us move on to the next question now. Question number 7. Uh, the directions are a full sentence is indicated in bold in the passage and the sentence is split into four parts as shown below. Identify the error if any in the sentence. Okay, let me read out the sentence in bold for you and parallelly please keep track of it on the screen. The client base of the organization has expanded in recent years in part because of the growth in demand of English as a second language course. So, this is the sentence which is in bold and the options have split it into five parts and uh, five parts as in four parts and the fifth one says no error. Now, uh, we will discuss each part one by one. First uh, option has the part the client base of the organization. Well, there is no grammatical uh, correction needed here because it is absolutely correct. The second part says has expanded in recent years. Well, the client base of the organization has expanded in recent years is a meaningful and grammatically correct idea. So, there is no change needed in part 2 as well. In part because of the growth in demand of English. Well, here there is some problem because of the um, of the disturbance of the standard usage. Now, the standard usage demands that a particular noun be followed by the same preposition irrespective of where it is used in a, in a sentence or to present whichever idea it might be used, the standard collocation must remain the same. Uh, look at the word, the noun demand. 
the noun demand in this case should be followed by the preposition for because uh, it means the idea conveyed over here is that uh, there is a firm request for something that somebody needs and what is that that somebody needs people need english and in order to convey this idea correctly the noun demand must be followed by the preposition for and not by the preposition of okay now when do we use or when can we use demand of demand of means when somebody makes you do things and specially makes you do difficult things then it is correct to use demand of so here it is not relevant because it's talking about a need and a firm request for that need and so the correction should be demand for and this helps us understand that part 3 is incorrect now because there is only one part that can be uh, incorrect we can categorically mark on option 3 as the correct answer as a second uh, language option or a second language as a second language course is a correct usage so option 3 which has a grammatical error is the correct answer for this question let us now uh, move ahead to question number 8 fill in the blank with contextually meaningful option okay so the sentence in the passage is miss drew says dash what does miss drew say the situations vary the sites vary the conditions stem the cases deviate or the concepts vary now it is it is going to be difficult for us to determine on which is the correct choice by if we simply look at the choices so if we merely look at the choices and then want to or then try to decide on which is the correct answer it will be a, a little tough for us so in order to understand things clearly we need to read what precedes this particular sentence uh people from all over the world who are immigrants in arkansas take our programs miss drew says and then we have to understand what can continue with the idea so the situations vary makes sense because there are so many people uh, from different parts of the world and they take programs and because there are different Uh, kinds of people the situation will definitely not be the same and so it makes sense to say the situations vary fine it is not correct to say the sites vary because you are not talking of locations so two is an incorrect option the conditions stem now uh, stem means to arise uh, from where do they stem is not clear and therefore because it creates ambiguity rather than impart clarity 3 is also meaningless fourth says the cases deviate deviate means to swerve or change track uh, this also doesn't make sense because it does not carry the idea forward with uh, clarity the concepts vary again there is no there are no concepts that the uh, person mentioned miss drew has stated so we cannot go with choice 5 as well the answer to this question is option 1 fine so for question number 8 the answer is 1 the phrase that completes the blank is the situations vary fine the next question now for question number 9 the directions are choose the most meaningful pair of words to fill in the blank so let us first understand what this idea is in this particular sentence which has this blank which is blank number 9 uh then there's a newcomer who had a dash job he wishes to continue in the united states now the verb had which is a past tense verb Uh, tells us a lot about this newcomer the idea is that this is a particular person who's come to the united states and back home from wherever whichever country he comes from or hails from he had a job and he wishes to continue with a similar job in the united states so this with this clarity we need to proceed and then consider the options okay so we need to have those words which describe the kind of job this person wants to continue with uh, the first option has the words preferable or pretentious 
pretentious means something which is outwardly showy and it does not work with the noun job and preferable is of course a preferable job again it's a little jarring and this option can be dismissed the second pair of words are reputable and grateful now it's incorrect to use the word the adjective grateful to describe a job and for this reason this option can also be eliminated reputable and grateful both are unworthy words then the third one says prestigious or respectable uh, well in order to talk about a job which this person had back home and the one which he wants to continue in the united states i guess the words both the words prestigious and respectable make sense that's because both of these words mean uh, that this is a kind of job which is reputed and which has a good social standing that means people in the society consider it to be good and this is the kind of job this newcomer would like to continue in this uh, place where he has migrated to so this makes option 3 a, a suitable choice for this blank uh, the fourth set of words are prominent and permanent again uh, permanent does not make sense here because he's come to look for a job which is new because he is a newcomer so permanent does not make sense here and prominent also is not correct because prominent means remarkable and we don't use the adjective prominent for the noun job the fifth one says profitable and portentous uh, profitable is again something we don't use for a job a job can be lucrative but you cannot have a profitable job and therefore the word usage is word usage is wrong for this reason we can rule out option 5 also uh, portentous means momentous and therefore uh, or it also means something which is ominous and these don't make sense fine so the answer to this question question number 9 is option 3 and the words which suitably fill the blank to make the idea complete are prestigious and respectable fine now i'm moving down to the last question in this set question number 10 and the directions are choose the correct meaning of the idiom highlighted okay so there is an idiom here uh, i'm going back to the passage and reading out that sentence for you the last sentence of the passage some other immigrants feel lost in the culture shock and are content to plow a lonely furrow and plow a lonely furrow is the idiom which has been uh, highlighted for you this is question number 10 now we have to find the meaning of these uh, words or this idiom uh, the meaning of the idiom plow a lonely furrow is what to be a lone wolf now the sentence conveys a fact that uh, while some people want to get into those jobs which are similar to the ones they were doing in their uh, hometowns or homelands there are certain others who get lost now in the context of being lost in a new place because everything around them is different the words lone wolf don't make sense okay so we cannot go with uh, mark choice one as the correct answer to follow one's habitual introverted ways again the idea is that they get lost because they don't understand uh, the new culture which they have come to and if you say to follow one's habitual introverted ways there is no logic that is apparent here so two is also not correct three says to grouse and complain about one's fate and circumstances they are getting lost they are feeling uh, they they get lost means they are unable to understand or uh, absorb the culture or the new environment and therefore to complain about one's fate and circumstances is not correct over here to work or make one's way alone without help is correct because that is the uh, exact meaning of this idiom now idioms have a fixed meaning and keeping the meanings in mind and relating them to the context in which that particular idiom has been used we can actually arrive at the correct answer so when it says some other immigrants be lost in the culture shock and are content to plow a lonely furrow means to work or make one's way alone without help okay 
to prefer to till the land till a bumper harvest comes along now that there, there's no context which talk, talks about farming or agriculture so five is absolutely outrightly rejected we mark on option four as the correct answer for question number 10 and this brings us to an end of this particular set so I hope you understood how this new type of closed test passage works and this is how you have to practice. Thank you.